In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Would any children who are going to children's liturgy please come to the front of the church? Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe.
May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, that we then make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called on God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepters and thrones, and I accounted wealth as nothing in comparison with her. Neither did I liken to her any priceless gem, because all gold is but a little sand in her sight, and silver will be accounted as clay before her. I loved her more than health and beauty, and I chose to have her rather than light because her radiance (coughs) never ceases. All good things came to me along with her, and in her hands uncounted wealth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your glory shine on their cheeks. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before God, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Jesus was sitting out on a journey, a man ran up and kneeled before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments? You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all this in my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were purpose, and these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. 
it is easier for a camel to, to go through the eyes of needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astonished and said to one another, Then to whom, then to who came to save? Jesus looked at them and said, For human it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you will likely be relieved to know that I'm not going to preach a homily telling you all to go home, sell your homes and cars, and give the money to the poor. The reason for that is that it's not that particular part of the gospel that jumped out at me as I was reading and praying over this Sunday's gospel, but rather the line that really jumped off the page was when Jesus says to the young man, why do you call me good? For no one is good but God alone. Good. A term that we toss around very, very easily without ever really considering what it truly means. And on that account, I'm going to let you in on a little professional secret. I hardly ever go to wedding receptions. I marry about 50 couples a year. And unless I know the family really well, I don't go to the wedding reception. It's not because I have anything against the couples. I actually very much like most of the couples that I marry. Not because I have anything particularly against a wedding reception, because as long as I can duck out before the interminable speeches start, I at least get a decent meal. And certainly not that I have anything against the sacrament of marriage. The reason I don't go is because when I have gone, I inevitably get seated at the table next to Uncle Joe. Now, you know Uncle Joe by whatever name he may go. He is the one who sits down and as soon as he sees the Roman caller starts on with, Oh, Father! And he usually goes something along the lines of like, Oh, Father, you know, I was an altar boy for old Monsignor Murphy when I was a kid. Do, do you know Monsignor Murphy, Father? And I'm thinking, well, that would be rather difficult, seeing as Monsignor Murphy was dead 10 years before I was born. And then he'll proceed to tell me about how, you know, he, he doesn't go to church and doesn't agree with a lot of what the church teaches. And, but, you know, he hasn't stolen a car or killed anyone. And, uh, like, I'm basically a good person. And here's the reason I don't go. Because it is becoming increasingly difficult for me to bite back the retort Oh, really? According to whom? I'm a good person. Really? According to whom? That's not just for Uncle Joe. It's a question that all of us should be taking to heart. By what rule do I measure goodness? If my rule for measuring a good person is our society, then it's pretty darn easy to be a good person. Because society's basic ethos is, do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody. And even the not hurting anybody has a pretty liberal definition to it. If I myself am the rule by which I'm measuring goodness, it's still pretty darn easy to be good. I can let myself off of a whole lot and I can rationalize things away like nobody's business. You know, there were the, about 20 years, 30 years ago, there were these bracelets that were very popular. They had on them WWJD. What would Jesus do? And you would be amazed at some of the answers that would come up as to what Jesus would do. You know, very often it would be, well, Jesus would pretty much do whatever I would do. 
which is to say that I have just made up a Jesus in my own image and likeness rather than the real one. But if God is the rule by which goodness is measured, then being a good person isn't quite that simple. And Jesus, who is God, says in the Gospel today, no one is truly good but God alone. He therefore is the rule by which the Christian must measure goodness. And what do I do then? How do I become good if I'm using God as the rule? Well, in the first reading, Solomon gives us a pretty good example. God says to, to Solomon in the Book of Wisdom, ask me for whatever you want. And what Solomon asks for is wisdom and prudence. And he goes on to say that compared with wisdom, thrones and kingdoms are of no value. Compared with her, riches and wealth are nothing. He asked God to give him a discerning spirit, to give him wisdom of mind and of heart. In essence, he was asking God, conform me to yourself. When I pose the little question, what do I do then to become good? I use that word very, very purposely. Because goodness, good, is not just something that we are. And it is certainly not something that we achieve on the basis of our own merits. Rather, good is something that we become. To reach that true state of goodness, of which God is the rule of measure, is a lifelong journey of becoming good. And we are not going to do it on our own. It's impossible. There is not a single one of us who on our own merits can ever do exactly what Solomon asks and conform ourselves to God. There is not a single one of us who on our own merits could live out what Jesus asks of the rich young man in today's Gospel. For when he says to him, go and sell all you have, then come and be my disciple, he is in essence saying, do away with anything that you put before me. Riches, wealth, prestige, power, your looks, your health, your job, your family. Put it all aside and let me be first. We may well say, well, yeah, that's a pretty tall order. How am I supposed to do it? Jesus answered it in the gospel. He says, for human beings, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. And if we accept goodness as something that we become by this lifelong process of conversion, then we ought to remember that conversion always begins with God. It always begins with Him reaching out to us and desiring us to be transformed more and more each day into His likeness. It continues with Him, with His life of grace, living and growing and increasing within us. And it ends with him in that full union with the one who is goodness itself. On that day when God willing, we hear those beautiful words, well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome into the joy of your Lord. May God bless you all.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faithful hearts, let us offer our prayers for all in need here in our midst and throughout the world. That the Lord will direct the hearts and minds of the Holy Father and the bishops in union with him to guide God's people to the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That all Christians, especially those who are suffering for their faith in Christ, will come to a fuller knowledge of the Lord's saving power through the proclamation of the word of God and the reception of the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, our young people will be inspired by the poverty, chastity, and obedience of Jesus and Mary to consider a vocation to the priesthood or religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That all nations and peoples will honor the Lord's sovereign power and seek a more just and peaceful world. We pray in particular for a just peace in the Holy Land and Ukraine. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all people may be mindful of how grateful we ought to be for the many blessings that are ours in this land, and that we will work to ensure that these blessings are always used for the good of all God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the sick and the suffering especially the sick of our parish community, will know the Lord's saving power in their deliverance from suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased brothers and sisters may be brought to the glory of eternal life through the saving power of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today, let us also remember before Almighty God the men, women, and children of the southern United States who are suffering because of the current hurricanes. During this month, dedicated to Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, let us ask our Blessed Mother to join her prayers to ours as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father.
Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and me, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. the sign of the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is found in the red celebrated song hymnal 6.7, Our Blessing Cup, 6.7.
We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A couple of announcements today. First of all, the tickets are on sale for our parish uh, wine tasting evening, part of a, a larger uh, wine taste or wine fundraiser. Uh, the tickets are available at the main doors of the church. I hope that a number of you will be able to come out so that it's a, both a fundraiser and a fun raiser as well. You're also welcome to order wine uh, for your home, for Christmas, for friends, for whatever you like but it is more fun to order it after you've tasted it. Uh, our young adults will be hosting an All Saints party for the children of the parish. Uh, the party will be held in the parish hall on the afternoon of Sunday, November 3rd. Uh, children between the ages of four and 10 are very welcome. Please dress up as your favorite saint. And we're going to see if your saint can be found somewhere in the church as well. Um, the young adults though, are in need of a little bit of help. If any of you have religious items, religious articles that you're no longer using in your home, little, little statues or crucifix, anything like that, bring them into the church. There'll be a box at the back of the church. They're going to become the prizes for the games for the children. You, uh, many of you have probably already read in the uh, Guelph Today that uh, about uh, two weeks ago tomorrow, we had a uh, rock thrown through one of our stained glass windows. It was actually bits of concrete and it went through the window of St. Peter back in the narthex. Uh, contrary to the uh, Guelph Today article, it's not going to cost us $9,000 to fix it. It's gonna cost us $6,000 to fix it and uh, insurance will cover all but 2,000 of that, so thank God. Um, tomorrow morning, Mass for Thanksgiving Day will be held at nine o'clock. You are all very welcome. Beautiful way to begin our Thanksgiving Day with our great prayer of Thanksgiving, the Mass. The parish gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Chaley Shrine burn in uh, for the intentions of Nancy Peverly and family, and for the intentions of the Goydich family. And finally, on behalf of Bishop Ustricki, Father Bill and Father John, Deacon Quinto and Deacon Moises, I'd like to wish all of you and your loved ones a very, very happy Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you.